Welcome, my friends, to the Bob and Brad podcast produced by Bob and Brad, the two most famous physical therapists on the internet. I am Bob. I am exactly one half of the Bob and Brad team. And t- today I have my guest host, Mike Keenett's physical therapist assistant. There he is, and this is all his glory. Um, and we're going to interview Brian Bradley. He's with the Egosco method and uh if you have back pain neck pain shoulder pain knee pain any one of those pains you're going to want to stick around because we're going to show you some exercises you could try so um when you restore muscle imbalance how long before a typical patient experiences some relief uh instantly same uh, uh same minute Great. So, for example, that's a convincer. <laughs> or it's uh, Brian's full of it. One of the two. Well, either <laughs> way, I'm either the hero or the zero at the dinner party when somebody says my lower back hurts, and I say, "Hey, let's go try this." Right. And you guys all know the. Uh, let me let me go back over here. And if you guys want, like, this is a picture of you know sitting and working on phones and stuff like that, or on a bike. I'll show you later. Let me get to a piece of paper that I didn't write on. Let's say you have somebody with chronic back pain and they're going, oh, go, okay, like my back hurts. This feels good. This feels good. So now we're confused. Flexion and extension both feel good. You know, what do we give them? And you have, you have 10 minutes, you're at, a, you're at a holiday party and this is one of your friend's friends. Right. Who the friend came over and said, you got to talk to Brian. He really knows his stuff. And the person right away goes, yeah, I've heard that before. My <laughs> back's, my back's special. I don't right. deny that your back is special. I say your back is special. Let me show you how special. Here's a wall. We take the person and we put them in the old wall sit. Okay. So they're. They're smiling until they hold that for about a minute, right? Right. So here's their arms. And basically I have them leaning forward a little bit because I don't want them sitting up straight. I actually just tell them, get your T-spine and just do this. Just relax it. Because what we're trying to do is we're trying to take this section of their lower back. And for those of you just listening, make sure you go home and watch this. We're taking that entire lumbar section and we're putting them in a position where we're going to assume it's always on. We're going to assume those erectors are always on. Well, how do you get them? How do you get them to turn off? We get them to go up against the wall. This, this is about 110 degrees. That way we're not hurting their knees. You know what? I don't like, I don't really like the 90, 90. We bring their feet out a little bit, always with shoes on or barefoot. So their feet don't slip. Do not do this in socks or you will experience back pain when you fall. You want to push into the floor. Remember that, that relationship of the, the, the foot into the floor, shove that back through the wall for, call it 30 seconds. Now, I usually have them hold it for like two minutes. We talk to them and we, we get their mind off of it. And we say, okay, hold that long enough. Push, push, push. Remember, relax your shoulders. And I put my hand behind their lower back and I'll go, you feel my little space back here, smash my hand. And when they can finally smash my hand, then I know that those muscles are being pushed back against the wall. But now go to your anatomy, go to your PSIS, that little bone that sticks out in the back there, for those of you that don't know, we're actually shoving that PSIS into the wall bilaterally. Both feet are straight, knees are straight. We're not allowing that. Because remember, what's this mean, Mike? <laughs> remember when that foot turns out and the knee turns out? Oh, that means... I thought you were extending your back. I don't get what you're doing. Yeah. No, gotcha. no, no. We're, once that Rotating. foot turns out, yep. then we're creating a different load into the pelvis and so as we're getting an unilateral reaction so we're so anal about get your feet straight get your knees straight then shove it back you're actually adjusting the back part of your pelvis and you might actually get that si joint correction the person stands up and goes oh my god my legs i used to be an athlete what happened to me and i said that's great we just the reason why your back doesn't hurt anymore is because we just transferred it to your quads joking around yeah sure but i did put it in their mind the reason why your back doesn't hurt anymore and now they're really curious it does feel better like what did you just do (laughs) but now if i turn this sideways 
And we said, look, tonight when you go home, I want you to put your legs 90 degrees up over an ottoman. This is about 18 inches, palms up, and just lay there doing nothing. This is 90 degrees. This is 90 degrees. And you're laying there with your palms up 45 degrees down like this. Imagine if you just did those two exercises for the rest of your life, how much easier the physical therapist job gets if the customer shows up and says, I did my exercises all week. Mike, if you got your hands on that person week two and they did that, you're actually working with different tissue. The problem is that we cookie cutter exercises for people. And we say, your back hurts. Here's Mackenzie, here's Williams, here's this, here's this, here's this. Rather than saying, well, Brian was at a dinner party and showed me this. But when we get a good look at you and we take a look at your posture, let me show you something real quick. When we get to see this, this will blow your mind. This is why I don't advertise this because it's almost too hard to believe. And I hope I don't pull up the wrong stuff because I have some. <laughs> I agree. Okay. So, for example, that picture. If you had that guy coming in right away, you don't have to diagnose anything. Remember, we're not talking pain. If you, Mike, you and I are at the mall and we said, look at that guy's thoracic flexion. Right. Right. Correct. Look at, look at how his tattoo is not Kyphos. even getting enough credit. Right. He's like kyphosis walking around. You imagine what his breathing looks like? <sighs> right. You know, he's, he's inadvertently 22,000 times a day going into a trap spasm. Yeah. Here he is 12 minutes later. Yeah, he's pretty straight there. Amazing. And thank God he had the tattoo because then you know it's the same guy. Right. But look how much younger and athletic he looks. Right. And that's a 58-year-old Kona triathlete Ironman who was going further away from his individual records. And now he's catching back up to them and surpassing them again as he gets older. He's like a, he's like a really good bottle of wine, getting better and better yeah. and better. I'm impressed by that hair at 58. <laughs> Bro, okay. <laughs> for those of you that are listening, um, he had a little bit more hair than Mike. Thank you. <laughs> Mike, but you wear it well, buddy. You look like an MMA fighter. I like it. Oh, thanks. Yeah, mine's uh, genetic, unfortunately. 